Psalms, please, the book of Psalms. And we're turning to Psalm 32, please, the book of Psalms. And we're in Psalm 32. Psalm 32 is the one of 13 Psalms, known as the Maskil Psalm. Maskil means it's a psalm of instruction or a song of instruction. And so we're coming to this lovely psalm, Psalm number 32. In verse number one we read, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. You know, that's a lovely thought this morning, child of God, isn't it? Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. You just think this morning, child of God, how your sins are under the blood this morning. Our sins are under the blood. Never to be remembered against us no more. What a wonderful thought that is. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no gay. When I kept silence, my bones waxed old, through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me, my moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Selah. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgivest the iniquity of my sin, Selah. And for this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go, and I will guide thee with mine eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Amen. And we know that God will add His blessing to that public reading of His own precious truth. There's one thing this morning that is absolutely certain, certain about life. And none of us can deny If there's one thing certain about life that none of us in this meeting this morning can deny, and it's this. It's the uncertainty of life. As we journey through this life, child of God, as we journey through this life, there will be uncertainties that you and I will face. Uncertainties that you and I will not be able to flee from. Life can be so perfect. But listen, child of God, your life can soon be turned into turmoil. 
Life could go well for years. And all of a sudden, the world that you knew for so long is suddenly turned upside down. You know, that's the certainty about life, dear. And that's the certainty about life, sir. And that's uncertainty. But here's the $60 million question this morning. How do you embrace that uncertainty? If and when it comes. How do you encounter the uncertainties of life? Because listen this morning, you could face a certain area in your life, a certain period in your life where you feel so disorientated. Where you feel so disorientated and you don't know where, which way to turn or what one thing to do. How would you embrace that this morning? Because there's many Christians who have been brought so low because life has changed dramatically for them. Uncertainty for many of God's people is like a dark cloud lingering on the horizon that never seems to go away. Never seems to go away. And uncertainty can become a taunting torment in the heart of a child of God. I wonder this morning, are you facing some uncertainty? Life's not working out the way you've planned it to work out. And for some child of God in this meeting this morning, it seems that God is holding back your desires. It seems this morning that God is denying, denying your desires. It seems this morning that God this morning, His plans are not on equal terms with your plans. Uncertainty can leave a lot of believers disillusioned. One, there's someone here this morning and life is very uncertain. The way ahead seems so daunting. At this very present moment, you don't know what way to turn. At this present moment, you don't know what way to take. This morning, you feel that your life is surrounded by a fog of which leaves you in a place that is very daunting. I often think of Mary and Martha. And their situation. Lazarus was dying the scent for the Lord Jesus. And every day there was no sight nor there was no sound of the Lord Jesus coming. And here day by day their brother was getting worse. He was dying. And then he breathes his last. His eyes close in death. And they look around and the Lord Jesus is nowhere to be seen. Wonder this morning, is that how you feel? You're facing some circumstance this morning, some uncertainty. And the Lord Jesus doesn't seem to be anywhere.
But it was when their hopes were dashed, and any sight of any hope had all distinguished, it was then where the Lord Jesus appeared. And this morning in your situation, the longer, the longer it goes on, the uncertainty is getting greater, and it's getting greater, and it's getting greater. But here's how God wants you to understand your uncertainty. This is the thrust of the message this morning. Here's how God wants you to understand the uncertainty that you're facing right now. He wants you this morning to see your uncertainty as a university where you can graduate and when you come through it, you will receive the master's degree in maturity of faith. Maybe you're here this morning, child of God, young fella, and you're uncertain about your future, you're wondering, is Miss Wright ever going to come along? You want to settle down like everybody else and get married. But there's no sight nor sign of anybody. And life for you perhaps seems uncertain. Maybe a young lady this morning, you're longing for Mr. Wright to come across your path. But at this moment, that seems uncertain. Maybe there's a child of God this morning, you're in a certain workplace and you want out. You want to change. But nothing's happening. It's all uncertain. Everything's up in the air. You don't know what way to turn. Maybe a sickness has come into the home. Maybe some problem has presented itself. And this morning, child of God, it's out of your control. And life for you it's so uncertain. Here's what God wants you to do this morning. Now listen, listen, this is God. This isn't George McConnell because there's no use if it's George McConnell. God wants you to understand this morning the uncertainties that you face. He wants you to see that uncertainty at this moment in time as a university where he wants you to mature in your faith. And in Psalm 32, verse 8, God promises you three things as you face your uncertainty. You know the first thing God promises you this morning? He promises you first and foremost, He promises you divine instruction. Listen to what he says in verse number 8. Now listen to what God says. I will instruct thee. Now listen, child of God. Too many Christians have made shipwreck of their lives because they couldn't wait on God's instruction. Too many Christians made havoc of their lives because they failed in waiting on God. They failed in listening for God's instruction. There was a, a sailor who repeatedly got lost at sea. Every time he went out to sea, he got lost. And there was a search party sent out, and they could hardly find him. But they found him. This went on many, many times. He just got, kept getting lost out at sea. So his friends bought him a compass. They bought him a compass, and they bought him a map. And they showed him what to do. And they showed him, now, make sure you keep the needle up north at all times. And you'll not get lost. So the next time he went out, the stress signals came again. This man got lost with compass and map and all. 
And when the friends got him again, he told his friends, that compass isn't working. He said, what do you mean the compass isn't working? He says, I'm telling you now that compass didn't work. Every time I looked down at that compass, he says, the whole needle was pointing at southwest. The man says to him, give me that compass there, I'm into a sea. And he hold the compass, and lo and behold, the compass was pointing at north. Now, what did that sailor do? That sailor headed in a direction that he thought and believed was north. And got disillusioned and got lost. Now, listen, child of God. This is what God's saying. Listen, when we forsake to listen to God's instruction, we'll make shipwreck. We'll get disillusioned. We'll get lost. We'll get frustrated. there's one thing, child of God, God wants you to do this morning, He wants you to place that uncertainty that you're facing this morning into His care and into His keeping. Listen to what Job said, Job 23 verse 10. Job says, He knoweth the way that I take. What does that mean this morning? God knows the way in which He is taking me. Listen, child of God, God knows the uncertainty that you're facing. God knows the journey that you're on. God knows and understands the frustrations of life. Think of the children of Israel at the Red Sea. Perhaps where you are this morning is a place where God has brought you. When the children of Israel got to the Red Sea, the Red Sea was in front of them. The mountains were on either side. And you know, friends, we're, we're, we're read that the very chariots of the Egyptians were coming behind them. And listen, it wasn't the devil that sent them there. And it wasn't Moses that led them there. It was God that led them there. Maybe you're like the children of Israel this morning. You're at a dead-end place, and your cry of your heart is, Where do I go from here? Where do I turn? There seems to be no way out. And this morning, child of God, maybe there seems to be no way out for you. Some situation has arose this morning, and life is so bleak. Life has become so dark. Life has become so difficult and dark and distressing. And the truth is, you're almost overwhelmed. Listen to what God promises this morning. He says, I will instruct thee. We all want, and listen, there's nobody more better at it than me, there's nobody, and listen, child of God, we all want this morning to control the uncertainties of life. We all want to be in control as to what the future holds. The old natural person, we want to control our future. We want to control the uncertainty. We want to be in control. But what we fail to consider and realize this, this tonight, this morning, is that these uncertainties, these problems, they're too great for you and I to control. Do you remember Elijah? When Elijah was at the, at the brook, he was there because that's where God instructed him to be there. And there came a time when the brook dried up, and, and Elijah was wondering, what's going to happen next? The water is gone. Everything's gone. That sustains me here. What do we do now? What do we do now? Do you know what Elijah done, friends? Elijah done the right thing. He waited where he was. He waited where he was. 
You know, child of God, maybe like Elijah, Elijah this morning, the situation seems so uncertain. Like for Moses and the children of Israel, you didn't know what way to go. But listen, here's what Psalm 37, 7 says. Take this from the Lord this morning. It's for you. It's for your heart. Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. That's what the Lord wants to do you this morning as you face this great uncertainty, this great difficulty, this giant that seems so unconquerable. This is something God wants you to do. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently on Him. Lamentations 3.25 says, The Lord is good unto them that wait for Him. And maybe for someone in this meeting this morning, now listen to what the Lord is saying to you. Your life seems to, at your side of things, has turned upside down, and it feels you can't cope. You feel that you can't go on, and you feel you, you have nowhere to turn. Listen, here's what God wants you to do this morning. He wants you, after this service this morning, to go into your bedroom, and He wants you to get down on your knees, and He wants you to tell Him all that's on your heart, and He wants you to place it into His hands. That's what He wants you to do. I will instruct thee. He promises divine instruction. Notice the text again. Not only does he promise divine instruction, he promises divine education. He promises divine education. Listen to what it says, verse number 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way. You know, child of God, God doesn't allow these uncertainties to come into our lives to tease us. Listen, child of God, whatever uncertainty that's getting you down at the moment and that you're ca causing you to fear, listen, God hasn't allowed it to tease you. God has brought it here to, to teach you, to teach you. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. Sometimes, you know, we have to just pause and ponder for a wee moment. If there's one thing I detested was school, well, you've got to know that now. And when it came to, when it came to exams, when it came to exams, what happened was we were always called to revise. Revise. Revise over the lessons that we've learned in the past. I done great revision. My school bag get just lay under the table. But here's what God does. This is what God does. You know what God wants you to do, child of God? He wants you to revise over past lessons that you learned in the past, lessons that you thought, past uncertainties, past problems, past trials, past problems, past pain, past trials that you thought were unconquerable, but yet God saw you through them. God in His own time taught you in the way. Back then, when you faced past problems, you thought you would never get through it. You would never see yourself on the other side of it. But God taught you great lessons through it. As you stop and as you look back, somebody says it's not good to look back. I'll tell you many a time I have to look back. And I look back at times when I was distressed in life. And I look back at times when I was disillusioned. When I look back at times in my life when I didn't know what way to turn. And I see how God in His mighty hand had His hand upon me and brought me through it and brought me to the far side. That gives me hope for the uncertainty that I face. 
just saying to William John and Alan before we come out into the outer building, I remember three weeks leading up to my induction service. The uncertainty of the future was so, so great. It almost pushed me over the edge mentally. Worrying about it. Stressing myself over it. And if I had backed out of it, and if I had turned another way, listen, look at the blessing I would have missed if I'd done it. Ah, oh, no, friend. Since I took the step of faith and came to Kilkeel Baptist Tabernacle over five, almost five and a half years ago, I can tell you God has taught me many lessons since I stepped out. Ah, oh, no, your, 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 your uncertainties, child of God, are the universities where you and where I mature in the faith. Can you imagine Joseph as he's been betrayed by his brethren? Can you imagine Joseph as the, here's the brethren talking about slaying him. Can you imagine Joseph this morning as they cast him into a pit? Can you imagine Joseph where he was when he was being brought down into Egypt? Imagine what was going through Joseph's mind. Imagine the uncertainty that he was facing. Imagine the uncertainty that he was going through. And yet, yet God was with them all the way. Even when Joseph was in the prison for something he didn't do, all because some wee slip of a lassie told lies on him, and he was put in the prison for something he didn't do, yet, friend, he proved this, God was with him, and God was teaching him lessons that he would have learned nowhere else. You think of Daniel this morning. When the Babylonians came and surrounded the city, and they deported the wee Hebrew boys away down into Babylon and burned Jerusalem to the ground, there was times I wondered, I'm sure, that Daniel was disillusioned. Where am I going? What's going to happen? But Daniel learned that God taught him in the way. Child of God, listen. At this moment, you're sitting in this service. And you're facing something that you don't know what way you're going to go. And things are so desperate, you don't know what to do. You just wait on the Lord. That's the message he has given to me this morning because God has given you these promises. I will instruct thee and will teach thee in the way that thou shalt go. Tell me this child of God, does God mock his children? No, he doesn't. Does God desert his children in times of distress? No, he doesn't. God always promises, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Thursday afternoon, I was sitting at a bedside of a lady who's dying of cancer. Her and the husband had sent me for me. They belonged to Killicomane Baptist Church. Here I was at this bedside in a little home. And this lady, junior caller, she says, George, I know. I know where I am. I know what lies ahead of me. And he says, what can I do? But this is what I am doing. I am resting in the Lord and he's teaching me lessons that I've never learned in my life. And as I sat at that bedside 
and I read and I prayed with her. Do you know something? I came out of that bedroom feeling ashamed. Because that wee woman was more of a blessing to me than I believe that I was to her. She is a living proof that God is in control at such times. And whatever you're facing, dear, whatever it is, or brother, whatever has come into your life this morning that has turned your world upside down, you take this from God. You don't take this from me. You take this from God. God is in control. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou shalt go. One more thing God promises in that text. He not only promises divine instruction. He not only promises divine education. Notice this. He promises divine observation. Because listen to what he says. I will guide thee with mine eye. In the original, this is what it says, in the original. I shall counsel thee, and mine eye shall ever be upon thee. Now here's a comforting thought, child of God, with this I'm finished. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are ever, ever open unto your cry. And this morning, child of God, as you face an unknown future, and as you face this uncertainty in life, or uncertainties, listen to what God is saying to your heart this morning. I'm only bringing the message of the Lord. You listen to what God promises. I will instruct thee. Whatever you're facing, I will instruct thee. Whatever you're going through, I will teach you in the way. And whatever you're going through, listen, I will guide thee with mine eye. You see, child of God, there's nothing uncertain with God. Nothing. He sees your every teardrop. He feels your silent fear. He knows your unknown pathway. And he promises to be near. There's many times, child of God, I have to say this. My times are in thy hand. Why should I doubt or fear? For my Father's hand will never cause his child a needless tear. Whatever you face this morning, child of God, God has you in that university to cause you to mature in the faith and to learn to really to put your trust in him. May God bless his word to all of our hearts this morning. 734.